this is where uh, me and the wife hang out once the kids are gone to bed. We get out here and sometimes have a little charcoal barbie to keep our feet warm and a couple of drinks and talk about how great we are and stuff and where we're going to go. <laughs> it's a beautiful seat. Have you, uh, yeah. Did you varnish that? A bit of varnish, yep. That's beautiful. Uh, you got to have, done. A, gotta have the boat bling. You've got to have a few shiny things around. It looks really nice. And, I noticed <laughs> you, and uh, it looks like you've, um, you've varnished all around the outside as well, all the uh, oh, tin yeah. work down the side there. Oh, this thing, yeah, it's, that's been, that's not meant to be up there. It's just moved out of the way while we're fixing some rust. We varnish that up. Beautiful timber. What sort of timber is that? Mahogany or something? Yeah, I don't know much about wood to be honest. Someone told me it was spotted gum. Oh, okay. Yeah, beautiful you know, dark timber. Eight coats of varnish or something. You can't do it when it's rainy, you can't do it when it's sunny, and you can't do it when it's windy, so it's quite tricky. <laughs> I just sounds, ignore all those rules. Sounds like some good excuses to <laughs> enjoy the water. That's what the can, apparently. <laughs> I want a job like that, with a job description like that. <laughs> So this all looks new, this um, stainless steel. Yeah, this is the cockpit. Um, as you can see, it's a construction site. We've just got old tarps up here at the moment. Um, this framework is going to support, this is going to be all enclosed here, basically. Um, it's what they call a dodger and a bimini will be going here. So this will be canvas with windows. Um, we built this, this thing here. Um, this is a new addition. I made this with a friend of mine. Oh, okay. Just out of um, laminated plywood and coated with uh, fiberglass. Ah. I'm quite proud of that actually, it came out really nice. That's but that nice. Is, the dodger is gonna the canvas work's gonna attach to that and go over all this framework. Mm -hmm. It's um, around about eight thousand bucks just for that canvas and framework, believe it or not. Gee. <laughs> well the last anyway, it's stainless steel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Well that way we'll be able to sail in really bad weather and we won't get frozen and wet and all the rest of it. Yeah, that's great. And uh, into the uh, interior. Yeah. Into the lounge room. Is that what, is what this space would be called? A lounge room? Or? Well, you know, there's all jargon with boats, so I try not to use it to be honest because I think it's a bit wanky, but this is the main saloon. If the main technical. saloon? Yep, that's what they call it. It's just a lounge room. Um, well, it's certainly spacious. It's, uh, as I was saying before, it's like a TARDIS. You walk, <laughs> yeah. walk in and you just can't believe there's, ha there's this much space here. There's a <laughs> lounge, there's computers, there's books, and uh, a couple of uh, little ones, and uh, toys and it's all very much a, a living and a working environment that's for sure. Beautiful. Yeah, I love the timber work. It's got a lot of headroom that's that's one unusual thing about this boat well the ceiling's been torn off at the moment of course but most boats um, even big ones you sort of you crouch or you might just have enough headroom so it's very unusual to have this much headroom. Apparently the guy that built it you know his family were all six foot six or something so he made it that way. Well you're certainly not short you're over six foot and uh, there's plenty of headroom above you there, so it's, yeah. it's got a really good feeling of space. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, it is nice. A lot, of, a lot of boats are quite pokey, which is okay too, but you know, I like this design. That's a new cooker. Uh -huh. we put that in a little while ago. That was whatever, over a thousand bucks because it's, it's a boat cooker, so it's got to be expensive. <laughs> 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 but you need it. You need a proper boat cooker because, uh -huh. um, you know, the flame blows out, it'll turn off and just basic safety sort of stuff. Oh, okay. It's all stainless steel obviously yeah, and it's all uh, gas. It's pricey, yeah. Yeah. And I love the timber work. I love the uh, it's very very tasteful the uh, Yeah. Beautiful um, Yeah, you did a great job of all, all this varnish work and that. Um, mm. it's hard because I've got all tradies on here at the moment sandblasting and doing all sorts of horrific stuff and I'm constantly running around going, What are you doing? Don't damage the timber <laughs> and you know, running around with a vacuum cleaner after a moment. We've been sandblasting in here so I don't know if you've ever seen what goes on with sandblasting but it's um, no, no, I'm it's interested uh, to see what's, what's what you're doing there. Well, like uh, after the guy had been sandblasting, this was sort of this deep in sand down here. This was like a beach in here. Oh wow! And there was sand everywhere. There was sand, I don't know, in my breakfast, in my underpants, in my bed, <laughs> like you know, behind things, like everywhere. Yes. Yeah. The guy standing here with the hose, just going, <laughs> sand is just going. Oof. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrific. And what's the purpose of the sandblasting? What's that for? It's um, to clean the rust off the steel, so you, you get the rust back. To the, clean the steel back to bare steel and then uh, paint it with epoxy paint mm -hmm. that way the rust shouldn't come back again you know the boat was been pretty badly neglected so it was the only way unfortunately well we spent a long time kidding ourselves and going oh, you know we can just paint a little bit here and then finally realize oh, good, good. <laughs> 
got to experience the pain. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're on the home run on the, on the final leg anyway. It's uh, yeah, like a good, so. good investment. To and this is a little yeah. pantry. This, yeah. With this designer boat, this would normally be another cabin. Yeah. But, um, this bloke's made this into a pantry. We've got a little fridge here. Uh-huh. Little stuff. I've got my home brewing equipment back there. Oh, it's okay. a bit hard to see, but there's a massive great big home brewing set up there because I do like quite a lot of beer. It's very spacious. A lot of food here. A lot of... Uh, and that's a... What's, what does that run on that fridge? Oh, it's 12 volt. 12 volt, yeah. Really lovely fridge. There's a fuel tank under there. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, and it looks, looks so shocking. There's all these construction materials everywhere, all sheets of wood and mm. garbage. So that, would, would that run off uh, off solar panels? and? Yeah, the solar panels will run that fridge. Like, we can leave the boat. Uh, solar, solar panels are amazing, the amount of power they put out. Yeah, so we can leave the boat and the, all that stuff will keep running. It won't run, batteries won't go flat. Mm. And then when we're on board, we use the generator to when we need a bit of extra power. But um, we're happy to upgrade the solar panels a bit, and then we won't even need the generator. Like it's, it's amazing how much power they put out. It's really cool. You know, it's just free. And and silent. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, got to you know, got to have my big speakers in the next radio. I've got my, oh sub, my subwoofer under there. Goodness, look at those speakers. They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't realise that they were actually speakers. They're huge. Oh, I love my doof doof music. Yeah, there's a subwoofer down there, twelve inch one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and you got your, your your television, your flat screen. Yeah, all those and, all uh, the comforts at home. I do like the white and the timber. It's very uh, very tasteful. Yeah, yeah, it's very shippy, isn't it? I, I like it too. Nice and shiny, and you can see why the bloke took 15 years to make the boat. Yeah. And then we've got our little bathroom here. <laughs> You've got um, got the shower here, and this again it's um, under construction with the ceiling removed. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite spacious. Light on. Oh, well, I don't know I've seen. You know, there's, there's enough room just <laughs> except for a shower like this. <laughs> I've seen some very small uh, heads. Hmm. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, you know you could swing a, a well a kitten in here anyway I think you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it works there's enough room yeah that's good the sink and uh, yeah. all that sort of stuff water's yeah. always an issue on a boat but we've got a fair amount of water storage so we're m moving up to the to the to the uh, the bow of okay. the boat this is the and cabin uh -huh. or the kids' bedroom as I would refer it to okay so do it and so we've um you can see we've We've, we've done stuff to keep the kids safe. These um, these things are called lee boards. These uh, stop the kids being able to fall out of bed too easily. Mm -hmm. um, and how old are your kids? Uh, they're uh, one and four. One and four. So one is there. The one the uh, four-year-old's there, and I guess the your little e yeah is in there. Yeah. See, so he's um. Yeah, we've got this. This is just a temporary arrangement. This sort of uh, canvas thing just goes up. Um, mm -hmm. No, that we'll get rid of that once he's a little bit older and he can um, we won't be worried about him falling down but you know I've, I've made this thing here with the little steps so um, they can clamber up and down and they really love this room they've got all their little toys and it's sort of it's kind of on their scale it's like a little mini mini room you know they've got their little bed and their little stairs and it's all made just for them so they, they really like this room that's great which I'm happy about because I, I mean I guess you always have that fear that um, you know they're going to wake up one day and go you know I don't like the boat or something I want to be in the house but they love it. It's <laughs> good. Nice. And you've got a bit of storage there. Yeah, it's just a wardrobe. A bit of wet weather gear in there. For, mm. you know, it turns nasty. It's good. So it's uh, I, I, yeah, I just was so surprised by the amount of room. And, and look, we've got more room at the back here. I can see there's a yeah, it's doorway through here. What's, yeah, it's what's through there? It's deceptive from like from the outside of, the, of boats. Um, you don't realise because see a lot of it's under the water. Like the water line. You know, the water line's probably here or something, so there's a lot of the boats underwater. It's kind of almost like, you know, it's, it's partially a submarine, so you, there's a lot more space than you expect when you get in. I just noticed, just walking into it, just how quiet it was. Instantly you're walking into it and it's suddenly all the, any extraneous noises are just subdued and it's uh, it's very peaceful. And yeah, uh, yeah. It's funny because it's a steel boat too. It's kind of, it's built like a safe really, you know, it's just kind of sealed up. Yeah, so this is a little corridor into our bedroom. Mm -hmm. so some more storage along the way there. Yep, the whole Through here. This is, you know, when you kids drive you crazy, you can come in here and just shut the door theoretically. But although they always follow you in, so it doesn't really work. Well, you're at opposite ends of the boat, which is which is uh, <coughs> which just gives you a good bit of separation there and space. Yeah. And it's a double bed. Got some nice storage. Really. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's that's been one one annoying thing about this boat. It's, it's got a bloody small bed. But, you know, 
that's the way it goes. We've learned how to live on it. My wife's basically crammed against the wall there, sleep sleeping like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Well, you've uh, it's uh, it's a good size, I think. It's like yeah, a good it's all right. queen size. We got a custom yeah. inner spring mattress made for it, so that make, that makes a difference. Nice and comfy. It's more expensive than a house one because it's custom made, but you know, <laughs> it's all right. It's nice to have a comfy bed. And yeah, it's all under construction. You, you can see the rust problems here. This is this is kind of the before. Um, I don't know if your camera's going to pick that up with the backlight, but you can see the state of that. That's gone right through. So that's, this mm. is really bad. But um, that, that'll be fine once that's sandblasted and painted. Not a problem. Yeah. So it's just it's just finding the rust, dealing with it, plating it, filling it, epoxying it. Just just yeah. basically preserving the hull and. Uh, and that once it's done, it's uh, it's, it's going to be good for a long time. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's obviously just bits and pieces you're doing here. I can see. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's looked after, it should last indefinitely. But the problem with all these boats is they get neglected. You know, someone buys it, they lose interest, they dump it on a mooring for a few years, and then this is the result. You know, so once these problems are fixed, you know, as long as we look after it, it shouldn't come back again. And we think we've got it in time. You know, obviously, if this had if this had kept going, that rust would have just spread and spread and spread to the point where you would have had to basically smash the whole interior of the boat just to get to it you know because this is all kind of glued together it's it's hard to dismantle but you can see the rust hasn't it's just it's stopped there you can see how far the rust has gone it hasn't kept spreading so we've got we've got to it in time mm. you know if, if we'd have taken this off and the rust was just vanishing off down under there then mm. we'd be like, oh god we've got to keep going yeah so it's about yeah it's about timely maintenance and uh yeah and you know it's uh, getting it done and getting it sealed yeah, from the elements. Yeah, look, I've you know. Say, I bloody hate rust, though. I really, really hate rust. Mm. It's a cancer on my soul looking at that rust. <laughs> when that's gone, I'm going to feel a lot better. <laughs> but uh, you know, I guess there's, uh, you know, I mean, for me, there's always questions um, about what materials are good, good material for a large boat. I mean, yeah. uh, there's, there's obviously ferro cement, there's uh, steel, there's, there's timber, mm. there's fiberglass. Uh, paper mache, <laughs> but uh, you know, what are, what are your thoughts? What what, what, uh, well, what would you suggest to well, somebody? The standard line people always say is there's pros and cons. You know, if you know about welding, get steel or whatever you're comfortable with. I don't agree with that. Fiberglass is a wonder material. You can you can get a fiberglass boat, dump it out there on a mooring for years on end, with seagulls crapping all over it, and then when you want to use it, just come and hose it off, and it'll be practically the same it was. I mean, it's amazing stuff. It can just it can withstand the UV and the elements indefinitely. In fact, it's almost an environmental problem because these old fiberglass boats will just, they'll, they'll never go away. They're not ever going to break down. So yeah, I'd definitely recommend fiberglass to anyone. Um, the reason we bought a steel boat is that we, we're hoping to go really long distances on this boat. We're hoping to, you know, cruise around the Pacific or who knows where, where there's a lot of reefs. And if you hit a reef with a fiberglass boat, it'll most likely just be smashed to, to matchsticks or whatever mm. in, in a day. So. The steel boat can, if you're lucky, can survive. You know, you can hit a reef and it can bounce around and it'll get a few dents on it. But, you know, at least you can survive and you can hopefully get the thing back under its own power to, and, and repair it. Um, I mean, one of the most one of the most amazing things I saw was um, a yacht that had been hit um, by a container ship, like T-boned. You know, the yacht's cruising along the, and the container ship went straight into the side of it, doing mm. 20 knots. Mm. And the yacht had this massive, enormous dent in the side of it, mm. but they just motored back to port, like it didn't break it, mm. you know. And they repaired it. That was a steel boat, and they they cut all the, the the bent steel out and just put new plated steel in there, and the boat was fine. And you know, there's no other material that'll do that. Like it's the steel isn't brittle; it's flexible. It's mm. just like a tin can; you can squash it, but it won't break. Mm. And when you're uh, hundreds of miles off the coast, uh, that's. Uh Probably more important than anything, isn't it? I mean, life, you know, you yeah. can always repair a, a boat, but uh, uh, I guess it's better than just losing the boat altogether as well. Yeah, so. well, you know, I've had so many tragedies like that. I mean, it's a difficult trade off, you know. Fiberglass is good. I mean, the maintenance issue is a big one, you know. I mean, I'm not really an expert. I've, I've ended up going for steel because I was really worried about safety. And I think a lot of people in their kind of boating experience go through that. They, they read all the books about the disasters and all that. Like, I've read all that, you know, about, you know, boats sinking and all. I love reading all those disaster stories, <laughs> but it makes you go, oh God, I want the safest boat possible, so you mm. get a steel one. Mm. Then you realise, well, you know, you don't smash into reefs because you're careful. 
and steals a pane because of the rust. And then you go for a fiberglass one, you know. So I don't know. I'm part way through the journey, you know. Who knows? I might in the end I might decide that steel was a bad idea, but we've got a steel one now, and I certainly can't afford a different one. So we just fix her up, and <laughs> at least if we do smash into something, it should help. <laughs> And just like, and just briefly, just to just to end up, what what in, in a nutshell, what uh, what what work have you done? You've done some work to the motors, you're doing the rust work, um, you've done. The, we've you've fixed built, everything. Yep. You name it. You know, we've had all the water tanks out. We've had problems with the keel. You know, we've had to remove the ballast. Um, we've. Uh, what um, problems did you have with the keel? Well, um, water leaked in the keel. Uh, the keel is a hollow, uh, hollow s uh, steel structure with um, steel, like sort of like washers, basically, old just waste uh, from a factory, a little piece of steel chucked in there, and water got in there, so it was all corroding. So that was a really shocking problem. When I first discovered that, I was thinking, oh God, you know, that's that's it, the boat's dead, you know. <laughs> so that was probably one of the worst problems. We had to kind of get all the water out and get some of the ballast out, uh, and it's working down in the in the bilge. It's so hard, you know. You, you, Ass in the air and your head down in this disgusting, filthy space. And there's really nothing on this boat I haven't fixed. Actually, you know, every single pump, every th every electrical thing, practically almost everything's been taken out and fixed and put back again. It's just that that's what the marine environment's like. It just kills things. You know, it's like almost every day something goes wrong. <laughs> you just got to kind of keep try to keep going a bit faster than what things break down. You know. Yeah, I know. I know. Had some problems with the toilet there at some stage. I remember. We started on that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was when we first bought the boat, and it was New Year's Eve, up on the harbour. We had all our friends. You know, aren't we great? Look, we're on a yacht. Isn't this wonderful? You know, having cocktails or whatever it was. And uh, next thing, someone comes up, and you know those words that the boat owner fears the most. Oh, the toilet's not working. Sure enough, someone had chucked something in there, and I had to pull it all apart. Um, but I, I basically ended up standing in uh, human effluent for hours, like a puddle of it in there, while I was fixing it all, covered in the stuff. And then my Russian mate at the end of it all, he's going, you know, you, you don't smell too good, you need to have a wash. This was after I'd had like two or three showers, so it's just disgusting. Mm. <laughs> just disgusting. Like in a house, you just push a button and the stuff vanishes. We've got to we've got to deal with it here ourselves somehow. Mm. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, I think um, look, I think you know, it just shows your dedication to um, to this journey. Well, no? I'm so deep now, I can't stop now, can I? I think uh, I think you know you've been through a lot and uh, it's got to end at some stage. So, um, yeah. but thanks very much for uh, you know having me aboard and. Uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you again when you're heading up the coast. Yeah, no worries. Hopefully, I'll be. Um, hopefully, next time I won't be whinging about fixing the boat. I'll be sending videos from you know Vanuatu or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Well, look. Thanks very much again, Mark, and uh, thanks again for sharing this. No worries, mate. Okay.